how not to be a superhero. By Jules Evans, Philosophy for Life. So adversity happens to everybody. We have two things that we can use to help us cope with adversity. Firstly, we can learn to accept, and secondly, to adapt. So firstly, we're gonna look at acceptance. So when I was a teenager, my friends and I liked to go clubbing and do a fair amount of drugs, and we had a great time. We were young, we were high, we were beautiful. But then things started to go wrong. When I was 18, I had a couple of bad trips on LSD, and they traumatized me. Trauma basically means something bad happens to you that you can't accept, you can't process. I had a very rigid idea of how my life should be, how my identity should be. I thought I should always be strong, successful and popular. And when I found I wasn't like that, and instead I was hurt, anxious and withdrawn, I couldn't deal with it. I became obsessed with the idea that I'm not the man I used to be, even though I was only 18 and not really a man at all. One person who helped me understand what was happening was Carl Jung. He's one of the great psychologists of all time, though obviously he never quite worked out the whole glasses thing. Jung suggested our psyches are often split. On the one side you have the persona, which means mask or role. The persona is everything you want other people to see. It's you at your strongest and most attractive, sort of like Mr. Incredible here. On the other hand, you have the shadow. The shadow is all the parts of your psyche you don't want others to see. It's the weak parts, the wounded parts, the ugly parts, the shameful parts, all the stuff that you think makes you unlovable, sort of like your inner golem. Anytime a painful experience or emotion threatens our Mr. Incredible persona, we struggle to deal with it. We often react by shutting down. We hide ourselves away in a fortress of solitude, also known as the cave of self-pity. We escape into drink, drugs or casual sex. Or we might fly off into the area of our life where we're strong, like our work for example, while neglecting any area of our life where we feel weak, like our family life. And if we're really messed up, we can project our shadow onto those around us and blame them for our own weakness and imperfection. This is known as shadow boxing. Unfortunately, none of this works. We can't permanently cut off the weak or ugly or shameful parts of us, and denying or refusing our shadow self only makes it angrier and more intrusive. The best way to overcome suffering and adversity is through acceptance. When we accept our weaker and wounded parts of ourself, we transform and heal them. So we're gonna look at five paths to acceptance. Firstly, accept the limit of your control over the universe. Second, accept what's already happened. Third, accept that you're a fallible human being. Fourth, accept your weakest self. And fifth, accept that other people are fallible and imperfect too. So firstly, accept the limit of your control over the universe. The basic idea here is that you're not a god. You're not a superhero and there's a limit to what you can control. So rather than trying to be a superhero, we should follow the wisdom of Lao Tzu, Taoist philosopher. He said, life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. Don't resist them, that only creates sorrow. Let things flow naturally forward in whatever way they like. The essence of Taoist wisdom can be summed up in six words. The universe is bigger than you. Second, we need to accept what's already happened. Unlike Superman, we don't have the ability to turn back time, which means there's no point in obsessively ruminating over the bad things that have happened to us. Instead, we should follow the wisdom of Marcus Aurelius, Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor. You know, the guy from Gladiator. Marcus wrote, You have seen a hand, a foot, or perhaps a head severed from its body and lying some distance away. To which we might say, uh, no Marcus, thankfully we haven't seen that. Marcus was at war for a decade and obviously saw some pretty heavy stuff. Anyway, he goes on, Such is the state a man brings himself to when he refuses to accept what befalls him. He becomes an outcast from the unity of nature. What Marx is saying is that when we refuse to accept what's happened to us, we reject an aspect of our own emotional experience, an aspect of our own psyche. We cut it off and in effect exile ourselves from nature. But Marcus goes on, Here is the beautiful proviso. It lies within everyone's power to join nature once again. How do we do that? 
by practicing acceptance. So in life, as in sport, we often run away from the present moment. We either ruminate over the past or worry about the future. But if we can accept where we are without flying off to the past or the future, we can begin to heal and live more fully. Third, we need to accept that we're fallible human beings and that failure is a part of life, especially in professional sports. Even people who are very good at what they do still sometimes fail in front of thousands of people. We need to be able to live with being fallible. But sometimes we can shut down because we're not living up to our Mr. Incredible idea of ourselves. So take the example of Jonathan Trott, one of the greatest English batsmen of the last few years. Trott walked out of the Ashes tour last winter, blaming mental burnout. He spoke about the experience in an interview with Sky Sports. The fact that I was trying my guts, guts out all the time, you know, in the nets, training, um, you know, and, and just, just exhausted, really, physically and mentally, more importantly. Where I have in the past always felt really confident and, and, and capable of, of getting, you know, big scores for England. Um, I found I just couldn't. I was, I was, I was maybe wanting it too much again um, and getting myself stuck that way. When you rock up at a ground and, you know, the cameras are there, you know, the spectators, you know, 50,000 people wanting to see you fail, um, <laughs> everybody in the media scrutinising every move, you need to have a, a mental and emotional re resilience to that. And I just think, you know, I wasn't there and get going to the cricket ground, I was very, you know, it was quite hard to do, as I said, you know, keeping me emotionally intact. Now, it's easy to be an armchair psychologist. I've never dealt with a quarter of the pressure that a top professional sportsman like Trot regularly deals with. But from his own words, it seems like he was almost over-trying, overthinking, being an over-perfectionist and ending up crippled by shame for not always being Mr. Incredible. I wish someone had lent him a copy of a book called The Inner Game of Tennis by a philosophical sports coach called Timothy Galway. Galway applies Taoist and Zen philosophy to sports. Particularly, he uses Lao Tzu's idea of cultivating acceptance and not overthinking or overtrying. Galway writes, Many people carry around with them an image of the kind of person they wish they were. And when our behavior does not measure up to our idea, we grow dejected and then start trying hard to correct it. What is needed is not so much the effort to improve ourselves as the effort to become more aware of the beauty of what we already are. Fourth, accept the weakest parts of you. Accept your shadow, you at your most vulnerable and shameful, even though it can feel like death to do so. Why? Because acceptance makes you whole. Rumi, the Sufi poet, wrote, learn the alchemy that true human beings know. The moment you accept the troubles that have been given you, the door opens. When you confront and accept your shadow, you reintegrate it and transform an enemy into a helper. Secondly, accepting your shadow makes you real. We all walk around wearing masks, putting forward personas or fronts to try and impress others. But to make these masks, we have to cut off and suppress aspects of ourselves. We become authentic when we put self-compassion before the approval of other people. Third, accepting your shadow connects us to other people. We think that we connect with people by being strong, invulnerable superheroes, but that wins us fans, not friends. As a vicar called Nicky Gumbel puts it, we impress people with our strengths, but we connect with people through our vulnerabilities. It's an incredible feeling when we meet people that we trust enough to take off our masks. That's when we really connect. And finally, accepting our shadow may connect us to God. That's what Carl Jung thought anyway. To get to God, to get to the goal of self-actualization, we need to bring all of us, not just the good bits. Or to put it in layman's terms, to get to Mount Doom, you need to take Gollum with you. The final path to acceptance is to accept that other people are fallible too, while still trusting them. Superheroes can do everything on their own without needing any help. Human beings need help and support, which means we need to learn to trust other people. So Michael Jordan had a problem. He was the top scorer in the NBA, but his team, the Chicago Bulls, couldn't win a championship. 
His coach was Phil Jackson, whose nickname was the Zen Master because of his love for Zen philosophy and meditation. He's actually written a book called Sacred Hoops. Jackson realized that Jordan was trying to do everything himself. He couldn't tolerate that his teammates weren't as incredible as him, and he never passed to them or made them feel better about themselves. So Jackson persuaded Jordan he had to learn to be a team player, to accept and trust his fellow human beings. The result, the Chicago Bulls won the next three championships. But finally, there's a second part to coping with adversity, which is learning to adapt. If you keep crashing in life, you might need to change your steering. While it's important to accept we're fallible, we should also try and learn from our failures so we don't keep making them. Someone once said the definition of insanity is to keep trying the same thing while expecting different results. So here's some tips on how to adapt. Firstly, we need to keep track of what worked and what didn't. We need to take a critical, even a scientific look at our work or our life to see where we can raise our game. Secondly, we need to be okay with failing often. As Michael Jordan put it, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over in my life, and that is why I succeed. But remember, Jordan also said, I can accept failure, but I can't accept not trying. Third, swallow your pride. Don't be so attached to one game plan or narrative that you're not prepared to admit that it's failed. Think of the Bush government, convinced its strategy in Iraq was a total success. It was only when the generals in Iraq took the initiative and changed the strategy that things began to improve. Fourth, be open to the unexpected. Sometimes the thing that's working is not the thing we think it is. Think of Alexander Fleming, who discovered penicillin by accident when he left a window open in his laboratory and some fungus infected one of his samples. Millions of lives were saved because Fleming was open to the unexpected. And finally, be prepared to try something new. If your old intuitions haven't worked, try something counterintuitive. Every decision I've ever made in my entire life has been wrong. <laughs> my life is the complete opposite of everything I want it to be. Every instinct I have in every aspect of life, be it something to wear, something to eat, it's often wrong. <laughs> Tuna on toast, coleslaw, cup of coffee. Yeah. No, 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 wait a minute. I always have tuna on toast. Nothing's ever worked out for me with tuna on toast. <laughs> I want the complete opposite of tuna on toast. Chicken salad, on rye. <laughs> Untoasted, with a side of potato salad, and a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, George, you know that woman just looked at you. So what? What am I supposed to do? Go talk to her. Elaine, bald men with no jobs and no money who live with their parents <laughs> don't approach strange women. Well, here's your chance to try the opposite. Instead of tuna salad and being intimidated by women, chicken salad and going right up to them. Yeah, I should do the opposite. I should. If every instinct you have is wrong, then the opposite would have to be right. <laughs> yes. I will do the opposite. I used to sit here and do nothing and regret it for the rest of the day. So now I will do the opposite and I will do something. Excuse me, uh, I couldn't help but notice that you were looking in my direction. <laughs> oh, yes, I was. You just ordered the same exact lunch as me. <laughs> my name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. I'm Victoria. Hi. <laughs> so is there a tension between these two approaches? A contradiction between accepting yourself while also trying to improve yourself? I don't think so. I think you can accept yourself at a deep level as a fallible yet lovable human being while also striving to be the best human being that you can be. We're in a culture surrounded by fantasies of superpower, invulnerability, techno-enhancement and bionic strength. But I think we become true human beings through the opposite approach, by accepting our weaknesses, by letting go of our masks, by dying to our false selves, by allowing ourselves to be hurt, and by giving up our will to power. I think it takes more strength to be a human than a superhero.